Yeah, it's so loud. Yeah, it's very loud there. Holy cow. Yeah, not a surprise. What's going on? I'm going to send out a link so that people can watch. Yeah. <laughs> too. Zion, uh, what website do you use for those stats? Stat broadcast. Oops, but you're... Oops, what did you just say? I think he said the Duke site. I thought it was stat broadcast, but I don't know if that's. Yeah, we don't have we don't have access to that uh, right now, or at least I don't. I thought I did. During but... the season, we do. This is really interesting to people. Uh, guys, yeah. join. Let's see. Um, <laughs> people aren't happy that I. Uh, did the old good teams win great teams cover bit did we we covered right we did cover as we have a lot this season actually all right stat broadcast isn't working so i don't know what uh... yeah just pull up like espn dude yeah i will just make sure that the ads aren't gonna like squeal at you in the middle of it no they shouldn't we are live on crazy cast Right now, come hang out. Go, go, go. We're going to talk a lot about Jalen Blakes. Did he even play much in the second half? I, I was in and out of the whole game, basically, to be honest with you. Uh, well, that's a really good thing to admit on live. Um, <laughs> I'm not, you know me, I'm not going to come in here and... Beat her on the bush. Also, Zion's frying you in our text right now. All right, I'm going to start it up. Uh, hit, it, hit it. Not this morning. Everything with about 30, 30 threes or something. Yeah, I mean, we kind of felt that. We kind of feed off that energy. This place is amazing. Like, I, I really love, I really love Duke and I love. I miss from in here. Mark Williams, beast mode. Paolo, first half, he had the cramping stuff. Fair enough. Beast mode. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What's going on, guys? Uh, this is what happens when Zion is, is in, the, in the building and not at home to produce this. Um, welcome back. Uh, Duke wins 64-47 over Vermont. Uh, big shout out to Autograph. Go to Autograph, get tickets for the next game, to all the games in the tournament. Use code CRAZY, C-R-A-Z-I-E. Um, shout out Homefield. I know you're rocking that shirt, Russ, over there. Yeah, hopefully we can repeat that this year. Uh, <laughs> promo code CRAZY, same thing as Autograph. Go ahead, get your merch, get your tickets, all the above. Um, let's do it. Zion, you wanted to get in here and chime in real quick, your thoughts. Live from Barclays Center, Press Row. Let's hear it. I don't even know if y'all can hear me because they're going to Wisconsin warm up right now. Speak, put your, put speak your loud, head. speak your loudly, mic. but we we can hear you. Just speak loudly. Okay, I'm trying to speak loud. I'm Perfect. trying to speak Perfect. loud. Um, but yeah, you know, good win tonight. I thought you know, um, Mark Mitchell was great. Uh, Flip had three points and he still won by seventeen. But I think obviously people will say Flip didn't contribute offensively, but I think he was great out the post, great passing out the post. He was doubled a lot. Um, our guards gave us three, 42 points, and you know it wasn't it wasn't an amazing performance by Roach, Proctor, um, and McCain, but you know they gave us production. And, and I saw too many people complaining about you know the margin of victory, bro. It's March, bro. Kentucky just lost. What are y'all talking about, man? It only matters if you win the game. So, you know, survive in advance, and they did. We'll see who they face on Sunday, but, you know, good win for sure. Yeah, absolutely. All right, Russ, kick it off then after Zion. We could hear you pretty good, Zion, so you can hang out if you want. Yeah, please do. Uh, hey, uh, we won. That's good. Uh, <laughs> I think, um, you know, 
people are going to talk about, you know, Flip only taking one shot. But, I mean, he was he was generating some really good looks for people out there. Uh, some really nice passing. Uh, he had a lot of, like, open looks for shooters. They didn't all go in, but uh, he was generating them out there. He was definitely uh, the one, I think, who was sort of uh, playmaking the most. You know, uh, Roach got some good looks in the pick and roll eventually, uh, especially with uh, Mark Mitchell there. Obviously... Some frustrating stuff offensively more than anything else. I thought defensively we were really nice. Um, <laughs> did, uh, outside of, you know, a couple of uh, gaffes here and there. But, like, we generated 12 turnovers, held them to 38% from the field, 25% from three. We won the rebounding battle. Um, I, I don't really have many complaints on the defensive end. You know, on the offensive end, um, you know, you'd like the ball to keep moving. It got sticky. Uh, I, I was definitely complaining about, you know, the old Jeremy Roach drive into traffic bit. You know, when he has a lane, he can really make things happen out there. And uh, we saw that later in the game. He had some some really nice takes. But when he doesn't have a lane, I think he, he feels the burden of trying to just create something out of nothing. And if everybody's standing around, then that's suboptimal, obviously, for the offense going forward hopefully we make some adjustments uh because whoever we face next is going to be a lot more steep uh on the defensive end uh than vermont was today uh really nice start from mark really liked what we saw from mark today um you know flip in addition to flips uh you know passing uh his defense was really nice two steals three blocks uh, a couple of blocks early obviously uh, cleaned up a lot on the boards which is really nice Proctor made some huge shots. Uh, you know, I know five for 14 is not the line that you want to see, but, you know, he made a bunch of them down the stretch when we really needed a big bucket. And, you know, that's really all that matters. Uh, I find it borderline criminal <laughs> that Jared McCain only took nine shots in this game. We have to get Jared McCain more looks if we want any prayer of winning in the next round. Uh, he can't take only nine shots. Uh, inconceivable that he only took nine shots. Just uh, run actions for him. Let let things happen. He was doing some nice stuff out there. Uh, didn't get a lot from the bench today. Um, a little disappointing in that regard. I wonder if it's just because we got punched in the mouth. Uh, and so then we just went away from it. Jalen Blakes, I mean, now you know... <laughs> I was I was howling laughing. I could I didn't even care that he was turning it over, man. I loved the energy. I loved the enthusiasm. Uh, I loved the anticipation on the defensive end. Look, I I I would make a genuine argument that even though he turned the ball over on a couple of those things in a very silly manner, uh, his intensity on defense set the tone. I I think he definitely helped set a serious defensive tone. Him and Flip uh, together. I thought we're really, really active out there, really making things happen. Uh, you love, 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 love to see that. Um, but yeah, uh, all in all, it doesn't matter whether it's ugly or pretty. You survive in advance. That's all that matters this time of year. It was ugly for about 30 minutes. We survive in advance. Yeah, I think the thing that stuck out to me the most, at least in the first half, was the activeness of Mark Mitchell. I feel like a lot of times, um, at least and maybe it's because they were playing a team like Vermont, um, in the ACC when Mark, like against NC State, right? Like Mark was the one attacking the basket. It didn't seem like there was much of a game plan and he was the one that was taking a lot of those shots in the first half and it wasn't going well. But against a team like Vermont, who had to try to match up against Flip, um, they obviously did a decent job of, of denying Flip the ball, double teaming him every time he got it. Uh, and then taking away Roach to an extent in the first half and Roach didn't shoot the ball well, obviously. But um, when Mark was doing his thing against smaller competition, <laughs> it was uh it was tough for them because they just didn't have the size to match up with it they only could do what they could against flip with double teams and, and mark did his thing so um good to see obviously might not be the case against a team like wisconsin or jmu where there's a there's a little bit more um effectiveness on the defensive end but yeah mark getting setting the tone early and then jalen blake's coming in that was quite humorous just from the fact that every time he turned the ball or he forced a turnover he ended up turning the ball over himself with his big bouncing dribbles, which was kind of hysterical at the same time. Um, I, I will say I'll give Shire credit for going to his bench early within the first 10 minutes. Uh, Ryan Young, Sean Stewart, and Jalen Blakes had all seen minutes. 
<laughs> Sorry. I like that. I like that you said within the first ten minutes. You know, like playing but, the guys ten minutes in or because I think it was genuinely like you went to them like after eight minutes of play or whatever. yeah. But I, I remember like looking up and there was like uh, twelve minutes left and all three of them were still in the court and it was like this is something we haven't seen probably since January at when we had injuries to to Proctor and and uh, Roach. So it was just it was funny, not funny, but like interesting to see the fact that he was going to the bench that early. Um, obviously you're going to have to with uh, a game coming in, uh, in a, two days from now. So, uh, but yeah, Blake's shooting that three pointer and the turnovers he forced plus the turnovers he gave up after those turnovers, uh, always funny. So, yeah, uh, I think that, well, I mean, we obviously don't know who we're playing next. Uh, we just got to keep the ball moving on offense and you have to move when you're away from the ball. Uh, those two, those two fundamental things, uh, got us stuck in the mud at times today, uh, and made the game probably a little closer than it needed to be for stretches. We did a good job of sustaining the punches. I think that's what good defense does. We just weren't able to completely, uh, we weren't able to like create separation until there were only a few minutes left. We were kind of in that six point spread, you know, the whole way. Uh, hold on. Zion says he's got a message. Zion. Yo, I forgot. I forgot to say. Uh, Kentucky, though, now we can talk. Now we can talk about Kentucky, man. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. I, I hope I hope the, uh, there's a BBN fan in the comments because I'm about to be on your butt on Twitter. just wanted to say that. Hi, Kentucky. Thank you for that related comment. Uh, <laughs> I, uh, yeah, that was that was so random, but I love yeah, it. <laughs> yeah, um, but yeah, I, we just gotta we just gotta keep moving the ball, and it's I'm glad we didn't lose this game. This was not a game that we could afford to lose by any stretch. Um, I think both of the next teams will obviously be significantly better than Vermont. Uh, James Madison is the real deal for people who have not seen them this year, and Wisconsin obviously just. Uh, acquitted themselves very, very well in the Big Ten tournament. So uh, move the ball on offense, continue to fight hard on defense, avoid foul trouble. I guess that's the one other thing without Foster there. Once McCain got in his fourth foul, and even after he got his third foul, he was just like not defending anymore, <laughs> you know, like, which is good. I mean, I guess that's, that's, we needed him out there for offense, you know, but uh if we, we we can ill afford to get into foul trouble, especially on the guard front with, you know, our, our guard rotation and wing rotation being a little on the short side at this point. Um, I don't know. Anything that you need to uh, chime in on as it pertains to today's game, Ryan? Not really. I mean, yeah, everybody is hoping that you get up by 20 in the first half and it's just you just coast to that victory. <laughs> and then uh, – when you don't, it's just like panic all around. But uh, when you pull away at the end, you win by what Duke won tonight. It's a good game, right? Like we didn't score a ton of points, but Duke did what they had to do. Today is just all about surviving in advance. And so <laughs> I'm going to smack you. Um, it's all about surviving in advance, right? And now you go and you watch this Wisconsin JMU game, which I, I've said since the selection show that we had that JMU is a, a very scary team. They can score the ball. At will, um, they have uh, they've lost three games all year. They've won over thirty games. They're a tough team. I think they beat Wisconsin. It'll be a really good game. But uh, yeah, it, I'm just excited to see who we end up playing. And uh, if it's James Madison, like I said, I have uh, a cousin on the JMU starting lineup, which will be very interesting to see. And uh, I'm excited for for that. So the the one thing that I would be uh, a little reluctant, uh, James Madison just knows how to win. Right. Like James Madison has won, what, 31 games. If they make it there, it's 32. Uh, they're, they're really, really good in that regard. I Obviously, Wisconsin's the higher seed. I would be concerned that Wisconsin just like because they play in the Big Ten, there's there's physicality there. You know, like we were we were even struggling with some physicality here in this game uh, for stretches, which. You know, this is Vermont, you know, like no offense to Vermont. I thought they played pretty well. Um, yeah, I mean, very good defensively. Only 18 points in the second half is is a really nice lockdown. But uh, if we play Wisconsin, they are going to hit us. And I think I, I forget who runs the 
I guess it was the Devil's Den uh, account. I don't I don't remember who it was exactly who pointed out that uh, after every stoppage of play, they were having somebody like bump flip. <laughs> That they were having like a, one of Vermont had one of their players like running into flip, bumping flip. Uh, clearly a very intentional choice to try to rattle him, to try to get under his skin. Uh, I think it's very, very likely that Wisconsin does something very similar. They try to, you know, take him out early, right? Get him frustrated early. Because if you get him frustrated early, then that has a trickle down effect. So we need our guys to fight really hard, be physical. Um and, you know, we're going to get punched in the mouth a lot next round. Got to get ready to punch back. I, and, uh, you know, I don't mind Proctor putting up yeah. those shots if the shots are open. I mean, like, he had more clean looks than other guys. My concern about that is less about Proctor. I'm glad he's shooting it, uh, especially because he made some giant ones today. Uh, it's more just I, I want to see more action run for McCain. I want to see – you know, if we're going to have Roach do some drives, we got to clear him some space first instead of just let him, you know, operate on an island. My dog just came in, if you couldn't hear that. Um, you hear that. Yeah, you're good. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, that's – it'll be interesting. I'm excited to watch this next game and see what happens. Yeah, it'll be good. It's uh... – I, the, the thing what? with Proctor shooting his most shots is like he's he with with the offensive flexibility we have I'm fine with it. Um, if if Proctor makes a few more shots, the game's even more of a blowout. So um, going forward without Foster and without the scoring threats that we have on the bench, it's kind of like who else? I mean, you could spread that out throughout the uh, starting lineup. Sure, and McCain obviously we like to take the take shots more often than probably the nine shots that he had. Um, but yeah, I I'm I'm all for it, and uh, yeah, it the JMU thing is interesting just because they have three or four guys that can go off at any given time. That matchup, I think, in my opinion, scares me more than Wisconsin. With they obviously have AJ Store who can light it up on any given night, but um, and you just never know who's going to show up, who's what type of wall is going to show up for for Wisconsin. So um, that'll be interesting. It's going to be a great game, but otherwise, I'm happy with tonight. Like what. You can't really – they won by 17 and held them to 18 points in the second half. Good job by the coaching staff to adjust. And it's like, at this point, a win is a win. And we're just – that's all that matters in this at this time of the year. And going back to Zion's comment, Kentucky couldn't do it. And we did tonight. And it's pretty exciting to to be able to talk about that. But um, And yeah. Kansas only did it from the worst call I've ever seen in my life. Oh, that was so bad, man. What a fun <laughs> game, too. Yeah, High scoring and everything. But – Ruined. Uh, Kansas still would have could have potentially won that game. I mean, like it just oh, it sure. ruins it ruins the whole thing when a call is so like aggressively and horrifyingly blown like that. Definitely. Um, Zion, anything yeah. else from from the stadium there? Well, we got you back. I'm here. I'm just I'm just listening to y'all. They're just warming up. Who's watching? Y'all. It's not good. Yeah, a little loud, little louder, Z. Yeah, cut him, cut him off, mute him. All right, all right, we got you, we got you. Um, yeah, and also, I, I, the other thing I wanted to comment, the other thing I wanted to comment about was the uh, the crowd. It was everybody was thinking like Brooklyn, New, being in New York, like Cameron North type thing it, on the TV. At least it didn't really come across that way, and people were tweeting out, and Zion was one of them that. Uh, JMU, Wisconsin. I think they even said that you, I, I forget who else is there, but UConn might have been there. Every other fan, obviously, whenever Duke is traveling, is going to be against them. It didn't seem like we had the, the home court advantage that a lot of Duke fans thought we might have, which will be interesting uh, going into going into Sunday. I feel like a lot of that probably pertains to the UConn of it all. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> you know, because they travel really well and they are aggressive and loud and, you know, a really dedicated fan base. Um, and so I don't think that'll change tomorrow since we're, we're sharing the space with them. Um, I, I don't think, I mean, U, UConn will play first. So maybe the UConn fans will go home, but like, you know, I, w I also wouldn't be surprised if UConn fans were like, <laughs> let's just stick around and boo Duke for a while because it sounds fun, you know. It happens, happens every tournament, and, and all Duke fans like to complain about it, but it's like, what are you what are you going to expect? And Duke plays in neutral site games all in non-conference season. This is nothing new. I just 
I get so tired of that whole yeah. narrative about Duke playing on the road in these neutral site games. Yeah, I mean, I hear that, but also neutral site games uh, like in Maui are different <laughs> or whatever. You know what I mean? Like, true. Like, or if it's a neutral site game where it's Duke versus Baylor and MSG, like, that's not, there aren't like several different fan bases all coming to boo you. I'm not, I'm not saying like that Duke should get an easier road or whatever. Like, I'm not like, hey, if Duke, I, frankly, I think that if Duke had ended the season hotter, there would have been more Duke fans there. <laughs> you know, I think that Duke fans probably, uh, you know, m maybe aren't as uh, excited, I guess I should say, about like a first round yeah. matchup, you know, in yeah. this particular venue at this particular time, which is unfortunate, um, but also probably true. So, uh, yeah, I, I, yeah. 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 How about this question? Do you want Wisconsin or JMU? I feel like, I Practically, think. it's a, you want JMU just from like a strength of schedule standpoint and everything. But like, I don't know. I don't know if we match up. I don't know. JMU is dangerous, man. They can shoot the lights out of the ball and have a lot of good playmakers. So I think I'm they're both because I have somewhat family in the team. So <laughs> to me, I don't I've watched more JMU than I have Wisconsin this year. So I think they're both bad in different ways uh, or both hard in different ways. I think both of them have ways in which we can uh, get some things going. I, I just don't think Wisconsin should be slept on. I realize that AJ store can, you know, go off and he can also sometimes, you know, get a little too aggro with the shooting. Um, obviously they've lost a bunch of games, you know, February 1st on, they've lost a lot of games. Um, so, I mean, in that regard, you like it, but man, the physicality really does scare me. Um, this is just not a team that responds well uh, to getting punched in the absolute mouth. And I know James Madison beat Michigan State at Michigan State at the beginning of the year, and they deserve all the credit in the world for that. They have not won a single uh, other game this year against a Ken Palm Top 100 team. You know, they've, they've won one game against a Ken, Ken Palm Top 100 team, and it was the very first game of the year, and it was in overtime. Yeah. So, like, I... I understand they've got the flexibility. They can shoot. They're balanced. Uh, they're old. Uh, you know, a, a lot of things that they have that are dangerous. But, like, one thing that I know Wisconsin is from having watched them even more than having watched JMU is Wisconsin will punch you in the effing mouth. <laughs> I, I was yelled at for swearing too much on this show. I, <laughs> they will punch no. you in the mouth and they will set the hardest screens imaginable. And if you try to fall over, uh, they're not going to call fouls. Like they, they're, they're a Virginia type team where their goal is to hit you so much, so, so much that like dare the ref to call a bunch of fouls, right? Yeah. Dare the ref. Uh, I don't even know that like Wisconsin, I, I'd have to check if their foul committed rate. I mean, it's like middle of the pack, right? It's not it's not huge or anything. The other thing about Wisconsin, though, uh, which I guess is worth noting, they uh, do allow uh, teams to shoot a very high percentage from three, generally speaking. Uh, they don't allow a ton of threes, but the ones that they do, I mean, they're 345th in the country in three-point percentage allowed. Um, there's some luck to that, obviously, but... Um, I just I, I can just see a world in which those first four minutes against Wisconsin involve them setting hard ass screens and shoving elbows into the backs of the players and Chucky Hepburn being intensely obnoxious to whoever's handling the ball. And, uh, you know, so in that regard, maybe I prefer JMU. I, I think it's it's a different challenge, either team, no matter who it is. And yes, excuse Ryan for streaming from three different accounts tonight. Yes. <laughs> I just got called out by our entire network, apparently. <laughs> yeah. Is there anybody who wants to stream this live who isn't right now? Can I just clicked. To the mix? When I did, I just clicked on everybody that looked like made sense to stream from. I don't know the difference. So I just clicked on them all. I, <laughs> My bad. Everyone should go to YouTube and hit the thumbs up on YouTube um, because that we can definitely track and would be good. Uh, it's going to be hard for us to track all of the myriad places that uh, <laughs> that this is streaming from. You know what I mean? <laughs> um, oh, I love it. Just getting called out completely. Um, yeah, 
I think, I mean, just from a, a strength of schedule standpoint and like the experience standpoint, yeah, give me a JMU, but uh, they're just, they're dangerous in a lot of ways. Obviously, I haven't played the same competition as Wisconsin has throughout the year, but Wisconsin's also coming in losing eight, I think eight of the last 11 games before the Big Ten tournament. So, not a team that's coming in very, very hot either. Um, JMU and JMU will turn us over, you yeah. know. Um, but Wisconsin, that's not really what they do. They, um, you know, just want to deny. They want to. They want to hit you. Uh, they want to make everything hard. Um, Wisconsin. This is like the weird Wisconsin team where the defense is maybe not as efficient as the offense. The offense has been really efficient this year. With, you know, Crowell makes threes when he takes some. Blackwell makes threes when he takes some. Klesmit definitely makes threes at volume. Chucky Hepburn, you know, uh, is not the best three point shooter, but he can get going. Um, you've obviously got Tyler wall in there who, uh, wall versus, uh, flip or honestly wall would probably, uh, you know what? Now I definitely want JMU and here's why. Cause if they're playing store and wall and Crowell together, right. Uh, wh- then, then like, what are we doing? You know, uh, who's guarding AJ store in that situation? Is it Proctor? Yeah, I don't. I don't like I don't like that matchup for Proctor. Like AJ Store is bigger than Proctor. Um, yeah, you know if it's uh, and like you can't you really have Mitchell, you put Mitchell on him. Yeah, but then if you have Mitchell on him, then who's guarding Tyler Wall? If Tyler Wall is being guarded by Flip, then who's guarding seven foot Stephen Crowell? No, you know yeah, what I mean. It, 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 I mean matchup wise, it's not great. They're just yeah. not as like the it's more, still wise doesn't scare me as much, but yeah. Yeah, the more I'm thinking about it, the more I'm talking myself into it, the more I'm like oh, I, I don't want to get overly cute with it. I know JMU is gonna be dangerous in many, many ways, also, for sure. But uh but Wisconsin it's Zion giving me crap from the account, by the way. This isn't like <laughs> Rob or anybody, so Zion sit this one out. Rob's Rob's too uh, busy to be giving you uh, crap right now. Well, I didn't I mean, think like, it was actually Rob, but yeah. <laughs> I mean, like uh, James Madison's got multiple guys that are pretty big too. I mean, like it's gonna be tricky either way. It's gonna yeah. be tricky either way. Can you do Sean Mark flip minutes all at the same time? Not and ha- not no. if you want spacing. I mean, yeah, or any sense of offense at all. You know, Wisconsin. Um, you know, with Crowell being seven foot, and he can step out and make some threes. I mean, like Wall is a guy that is not going to shoot any threes. Maybe Chucky, you know, like he'll shoot the three, but he's not great at it. So, I mean, I, I guess there's things you can do with certain guys out there. Um, even AJ Store is not like the best three point shooter, but you can't let him get easy ones because if he gets hot, then forget about it. Um, yeah, I, I just don't know exactly what to do with them i mean yeah flip young lineups maybe like again like it's i know it's yeah, no thing. thanks yeah but but against but against wisconsin that's not the worst idea you know like he's he's a big 10 player you know for better and for worse uh you know maybe playing two bigs is what you need you put flip on wall you put Young on Crowell or vice versa. Uh, I mean, I'd rather have Flip on Wall. Um, but then again, if it's Wall, he's going to work inside. Crowell adds. It's going to be interesting regardless. It's going to really be a testament to where's John's two game, like strategic coaching, uh, like schematic stuff at right now. Like, can he come up with some some answers or is the answer just play them at straight up? Because I, I don't. I don't like that. <laughs> I don't like that. Um, that's not an answer for me. Um, I don't know. But I'm also not paid millions of dollars to coach basketball. So what do I know? I don't know anything. Um, was there anything in the presser that uh, I don't know if uh, I'm assuming uh, Zion is not actually at the presser? No, I haven't seen anything since I've been on uh, not on this. I haven't been on Twitter or anything. Um Zion, any last comments or thoughts while we got you here? Just a shake of the head. All right, yeah, keep shake commenting. Head from Zion. Uh, keep commenting from the podcast network one. Uh, no, <laughs> you troll. All right. Uh, yeah, I, I want to also say, I, you know, just one last thing because um, I made this comment on Twitter and then people 
People were taking it a variety of different ways. Uh, you know, Duke had a frustrating end of the first half, and then John came and did the halftime, uh, like, little interview there and seemed very nonchalant. <laughs> you know, he was like, yeah, they made a couple of hard shots, but I thought we played really well. You know, and I thought that was interesting because especially when you watch, look, you can't compare John to Dan Hurley, two completely different guys. But, you know, they were up like 30 and Hurley was like, we got to get our heads in the game, you know, or whatever at the halftime. And I think a lot of guys like the Oakland guy is really intense. You know, there, there are a lot of coaches that are in here that are really hyper intense and, and fixate about here is what we need to do differently. Here's what we need to do better at halftime. And very few of them have come out and just been like, yeah, I, I thought we played well, <laughs> you know, Um and so the people who don't like John thought that this is a sign that John is really soft. And the people who do like John are like, how dare you point this out? You know, he, you know, he, he coaches his own way, whatever. Look, I, I'm not saying one way or the other. I, I don't know whether I like it or whether I don't. If he's winning big games, then I like it. And if he's not, then I don't, right? Like, it's, it's that kind of thing. But it is very different than other coaches, and I do think that, you know, as we head further into the tournament and certainly as we head into an off season where there will be recruiting and transfer talk and whatever, uh, coaching style and how it contrasts and compares with other coaches is an interesting conversation to have, um, you know, for, for better and or for worse. So, you know, whatever you took from that tweet says more about you than it does about what john actually said in the interview or than what i said in the tweet i think for sure um did you right. have any strong takes or you just want to get out of here and drink more bush light no yeah i'm i'm good right now i think we got bush our thoughts in we we talked yeah my my cousin here is ready to do the same um no good game overall i mean it's hard to hard to complain uh we won by 17 points tough to do that was it 17 yeah um great game uh finished strong obviously flip doing uh not his thing offensively but everything else was, was fine with me and just uh, yeah I'm, I'm watching this or i'm already watching the gmu wisconsin game and excited to continue watching it and look forward to seeing who we're playing on sunday other than that um yeah great time and uh autograph can't forget Use autograph, use code crazy, C-R-A-Z-I-E. Zion's like manually covering his camera right now. That's funny. Um, yeah, C-R-A-Z-I-E. Go to autograph, get tickets for that game on Sunday, and hopefully you can get some tickets for next weekend as well. Uh, and, yeah, uh, home field. One more time with the shirt there, Russ. There it is. Look at it. Um, get another I all, one. I got all sorts another of stuff. One. I don't have a hat on, but cool hats, anything – gear wise from home field retro gear it's awesome stuff so use code crazy at checkout and we appreciate you guys we'll be back on sunday for sure hopefully celebrating a win and uh yeah stay tuned for this uh james madison wisconsin game this is who we play it'll be a good one so let's do it baby appreciate you guys thanks for caring russ appreciate you <laughs>